okay uh, welcome this is uh, the clip on chapter 13 yeah the remainder of chapter 13 uh, this is to replace the face-to-face -face class on Sunday yeah, next week. Uh, so, uh, I hope to complete yeah, the discussion on Chapter 13 uh, by using the clips available here. Yeah. So, I hope there will be about uh, two or three clips. Yeah. We should finish the chapters, uh, the chapter in three clips. Alright, this is where we stopped last class, diversification. Yeah. So, we continue from there. So, portfolio diversification is the investment in several different, yeah, the keyword is different asset classes or sectors. So, it does not mean holding a lot of assets yeah, or a lot of the same assets yeah, or same type of assets. Here, it means a lot of different types of assets. Yeah? Then, it is called diversification. Yeah? Alright, we move on to the next slide. Yeah? Okay, here, uh, this table tells you as you increase the number of stocks in your portfolio from 1 to here, 1,000, yeah? And then you plot the average standard deviation of annual portfolio returns, yeah? You find that if you take any stock yeah, in the market, the standard deviation of return on average yeah, will be about 50%, okay? But as you increase the number of stocks in the portfolio, the average standard deviation yeah, of the portfolio becomes lower, yeah, as you can see here, it becomes lower yeah, until this point. Yeah. After that, it doesn't go down very much. It goes down, but then it goes down very marginally. Yeah. Right. The third column is also quite interesting because it gives you the ratio yeah, of portfolio standard deviation to the standard deviation of a single stock. Yeah. So, of course, when the number of stock in the portfolio is 1, this ratio must be 1, yeah? But as you increase the number of stocks, yeah, what happens is that the uh, portfolio standard deviation becomes less, yeah, than the standard deviation of a single stock. So, you find that it goes down lower, lower and lower until this point, yeah? Beyond that, it doesn't go down very much. So, from 100%, it goes down to 40%, yeah? That means... 60% of an asset's yeah, total risk or standard deviation of return is diversified or is eliminated through diversification. Yeah? But no matter how much you diversify, about 40% of the company or of any companies or any stocks uh, standard deviation of return or total risk here yeah, cannot be eliminated. About 40% cannot be eliminated, but 60% can be eliminated. That's what we can see from this table. Yeah? Now here, diversification can substantially reduce the variability of returns. This is the standard deviation of return. Yeah? Without an equivalent reduction in expected return. So expected return uh, will not be affected through, uh, by diversification. Yeah? That means you invest in many stocks at the same time. It does not affect the expected return, yeah? but it affects the variability of return or the standard deviation of return. All right. This reduction in risk arises because worse than expected returns from one asset is offset by better than expected returns from another asset. So you have uh, in a portfolio various assets. You, are, you don't have one asset, yeah? there are various different assets and they move uh, differently, yeah? the returns. Yeah? for each asset will move differently. One asset may perform better than expected. Another asset may perform worse than expected. So the offset, yeah, the keyword here is offset one another. So when they offset, then uh, your actual return is going to be uh, closer yeah, to the expected return. Okay, so that is why the variability for a portfolio, yeah, especially a well-diversified portfolio is much lower than uh, the variability of return or standard deviation of return for an asset that is not diversified. Yeah? Okay, so uh, however, the last point here talks about the third column. Yeah? However, there is a minimum level of risk that cannot be diversified away. Yeah? That means there will be a portion of total risk that cannot be diversified away yeah? or, or cannot be eliminated through diversification. And this portion of risk is called the systematic portion or systematic risk. The portion that can be eliminated through diversification is called unsystematic risk. 
Okay, and this can be seen in this diagram here. You can take any asset, and this is not this is the number of stocks in the portfolio, but this is the average annual standard deviation for a particular stock in the portfolio. Is that okay? It's not any given stock, yeah? it is the stock in the portfolio. Alright, so this is actually this uh, uh, line here represents the third column yeah? in the table that we have seen earlier. Alright. So, as you increase the number of stocks in the portfolio, what happens? The standard deviation of return becomes lower. Yeah? Until this point, it doesn't go much lower. Yeah? It goes down, but then it doesn't go down very much. Okay, it's almost negligible. Yeah? Alright, so we can divide, the, if you take this as the total risk yeah, or standard deviation of return for a stock, okay, part of it can be diversified away. Therefore, this is called diversifiable risk or unsystematic risk. Okay? And then this portion here, no matter how much you increase the assets, the uh, total risk does not go down below the average yeah, standard deviation of return. Does not go down below this. Yeah? Why? Because this is non-diversifiable risk or systematic risk. Right, so we divide the risk into two portions now. This is one portion that can be eliminated through diversification. This portion cannot be eliminated through diversification. Yeah? So that is what we learn from this uh, diagram. Now next we go to diversifiable risk. Yeah? Diversifiable uh, is the first uh, type of risk. Yeah? Risk can be divided into two types. The first one is diversifiable. The other is non-diversifiable. Yeah? So the risk can, that can be eliminated by combining assets in the portfolio that is called diversifiable risk and it has three other yeah, terms okay, which mean the same thing as yes? unsystematic risk, unit risk or asset specific risk mean the same thing as diversifiable risk. Alright and this point has been made earlier if you hold only one asset you uh, are exposing yeah, yourself to this risk, this diversifiable risk. That can uh, be diversified easily. Yeah? All right. Now we, uh, as I mentioned earlier, total risk can be divided into two portions. One is systematic risk portion. The other is the unsystematic risk portion. Yeah? The standard deviation of return is a measure of total risk. Yeah? We have used standard deviation of returns for well diversified portfolio. Well diversified means what? Okay, the diversification is good until there is no unsystematic risk. Yeah? Unsystematic risk is very small or it is almost negligible. Yeah? Neg negligible, that means almost zero yeah? unsystematic risk. Therefore, there is only yeah? systematic risk in a well-diversified portfolio. All right, yeah? Consequently, the total risk of a diversified portfolio is essentially yeah, equivalent to the systematic risk. Okay, of uh, the portfolio. Yeah? It's all systematic risk. There is no unsystematic risk if it is a well diversified portfolio. Yeah? But not all portfolios are well diversified. Okay? So when they use this term well diversified, you must know that it has no unsystematic risk. Okay? It has no diversifiable risk. All right, now systematic risk principle. Yeah, it says that this is a very important principle. It says that there is a reward for bearing risk. Okay, that means if you don't reward uh, the bearing of risk, then nobody will bear the risk. Yeah, because risk is uh, not an utility. Yeah, uh, very few people, will, a rational person, yeah, will not accept risk unless you compensate that person with more return, some reward. Yeah. So this reward is the return. So higher the risk, there should be higher the return. Yeah? So if there is not a reward for bearing risk unnecessarily. Yeah? That means if the reward will be given only if the risk uh, cannot be eliminated through other means. Yeah? Then you have to give reward. Yeah? Otherwise, people will just take risk yeah? just for be, uh, getting the reward. And yeah? that is not uh, true. Yeah? So here, the, the risk must be necessary, meaning it cannot be eliminated. Yeah? So the systematic risk principle says that the expected return or yeah, 
at equilibrium, uh, it is more accurate to say required return rather than expected return. Yeah? Okay, the required return on a risky asset depends only on the asset's systematic risk because the unsystematic risk can be diversified with yeah, at almost no cost. Okay, because there is no cost, almost no cost, yeah? there is uh, there's no such thing as no cost, yeah? everything has some cost, but here we assume that the cost is much lower than the return. Yeah? In relation to return, the cost is very low. Therefore, it is almost no cost. Yeah? So, by you can eliminate this risk okay, through diversification. And this diversification is a very low cost. Okay, Rather than investing in one project, you invest in two projects. That's it. Or three projects. Or four. And so on. Yeah? That is called diversification. Yeah? So, this will not involve a huge cost. Yeah? Therefore, there will not be any reward for bearing this risk because this can be eliminated easily, yeah, unsystematic risk. But there will be a compensation or reward for bearing systematic risk, for taking up yeah, or assuming yeah, uh, systematic risk, but not for unsystematic risk. That is the systematic risk principle. Okay? Right, measuring, yeah, so we know that here now, we know that systematic risk is relevant. Unsystematic risk is not relevant. Why? Because it can be uh, eliminated through diversification at almost no cost. Okay, so how do we measure? We know that the relevant measure of risk is actually systematic risk, yeah, for an investor uh, who invests in more than one asset simultaneously, yeah. But most investors are portfolio investors. They don't invest in only a single stock. And therefore, for most investors, they are concerned only with the systematic risk. Yeah? They will reward only systematic risk. They will not reward unsystematic risk. Okay, yeah? so how do we measure? We know that systematic risk is relevant, so how do we measure systematic risk? We have a measure for total risk. We use standard deviation of return. Yeah? But for systematic risk, we don't have a measure yet, okay? And therefore, here we propose the beta coefficient, yeah? Or in short, beta. We call this BETA or beta. So what does the beta tell us, yeah? The formula is this, yeah? This is the beta formula, okay? Okay, this is <coughs> beta for stock X is equals to, this is covariance, yeah? So ignore that, this is not so important. Covariance of stock X to the market return divided by the variance of the market return. But this is equal to, this is called the coefficient correlation, coefficient, uh, correlation coefficient or uh, coefficient of correlation. Yeah? This is the coefficient of uh, correlation coefficient for returns yeah? between stock X and the market multiplied by the standard deviation of the stock return multiplied by the standard deviation of the market return divided by the variance of the market return. Okay, but this because there is sigma m here and sigma m square here, you can cancel yeah, this, therefore you get this value. Yeah. This is the correlation of returns yeah, between stock x and the market multiplied by the standard deviation of returns for stock x divided by standard deviation of return for stock uh, for the market yeah? all right so this will be the beta yeah so this is the measure so we know how to con uh, compute the standard deviation for x uh, and also the standard deviation of return for market yeah? we have done this before but this is new yeah this is the correlation coefficient yeah? you may have learned this in statistics but it's new here in fm okay but uh, in this course or in this uh, text yeah we don't go uh, and measure this, the co correlation coefficient, yeah? It is usually given or you will be given the beta measure, okay? So you won't be asked to compute yeah, the beta measure. Alright, so what does this beta measure mean, yeah? What, is, what would be the value of beta, yeah? Beta can have any value, positive infinity to negative infinity. That is based on... Um, Technically, yeah, technically it can have any value, positive uh, infinity to negative infinity. 
<clears throat> but what does that mean? Okay, we will